and welcome to episode 29 of C3, Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm River. And I'm Ren. And today we're going to talk about the basics of tarot. But before we do that, we've got to talk about this cocktail. So it is the Hocus Pocus, and it is lethal. So I, <laughs> I don't. I think we're going to have to change it up. It's straight alcohol, you guys. But it is called the Hocus Pocus. It's got vanilla vodka, chocolate vodka, Bailey's Irish cream, which I think we might leave out, mm-hmm. and then the pumpkin liqueur and sprinkled with cinnamon. And the, the rim is a chocolate um, sprinkle rim. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like a pumpkin chocolate flavor. And it's amazing, but it's all, it's straight alcohol. There is nothing else but alcohol in this Mm -hmm. drink. So if we, if you can't understand us by the time we get done with this episode, you'll know why. (laughs) Um, So yeah, we may be tweaking that one a little bit um, or post it for our patrons and let them try it and see what they think about it. Maybe they'll have some ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, But at any rate, we are going to talk about the basics of tarot. Mm -hmm. So what is tarot? It is a form of divination. It is a tool that will help you tap into your own intuition and the wisdom of the universal energy that guides our lives. Generally, the tarot is a deck of 78 cards broken down into major arcana and minor arcana. There are 22 cards of major arcana and 56 of the minor arcana. And then basically you shuffle and flip the cards and read the meanings as they apply to your question, just like a lot of different divination tools. Mm -hmm. But did you know that the original uh, tarot cards were actually just playing cards? They weren't used for divination. There's a manuscript uh, from this guy from Italy, Marciano da Tortona, uh, and it had rules for the playing the game of tarot. And this was really popular in Italy through the 1400s, 1500s, and 1600s. I did not know that until my research. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. It was, it came about as a game, not as a means of divining. Yeah. Yeah. So off of that, let's go into the history. Okay. So the history is tarot was first created as a pack of playing cards. So it started from at least the mid 15th century in various parts of Europe to play games such as Italian uh, Tarocini. Um, that's how I'm going to say it. I know I'm not saying it right. Tarocini. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, ever, no. <laughs> no. Uh, French tarot and Austrian congrifin. I know I did not say that right. I know it. But it, in the sense, that is called the Game of Kings. Hmm. And so many of which are still played today, which I thought was really cool. Do they play them with tarot decks, though, today? Or do they yes. play them with? Really? Yes. And so um, in the late 18th century, some tarot decks began to be used for divination via tarot card readings and cardo, ca- cartomancy. I think mm-hmm. I'm, I'm emphasizing the wrong syllables there, I think. We, we always do that. Yes. <laughs> um, and this w- led to the customization of decks and develop for occult purposes. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So the original form of the tarot card game uh, family emerged around 1425 in Northern Italy during the early Renaissance, which I thought was really cool. And that's based off of the the game. I got that little blip from the description under the game of Kings, which was really cool. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are still tournaments uh, going on today in Austria, I think it said, Um, even up to like, and it's like tournaments. So they're big winners. So it had all the dates and the winners of 2020. That's so weird. It's like Magic the Gathering, but tarot style. Yeah, it's really cool. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. The earliest evidence of a tarot deck used for cardomancy, which we've already talked about a little bit, is the card readings slash deck readings, Mm -hmm. comes from an anonymous manuscript from around 1750, which documents kind of like point to that era, um, meaning that they are the cards of the Taraco Bolognese. Bolign- hmm. Bolognier. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I have no idea. The popularization of the tarot started with Antoine Court and Jean Baptiste Al- Allet or Allet. I don't know how. Um, El- 
Etiela, Etiela, or however you say it, in Paris. I know I butchered that. <laughs> <laughs> During seven, the 1780s, um, using the Tarot of Marseille. And I know I said Marseille, right? Because that's Yay. <laughs> it's similar to the Versailles, like Versailles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Marseille, Marseille, however. <laughs> or if, if you're from the United States in the South, the Marcellius. No, Mar- Marcellus. That that is very uh, what's the word? Wrong. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I apologize on River's behalf. <laughs> um, French tarot players abandoned the Marseille tarot in favor of the Tarot Nouveau around the 1900s, which, uh, with the result of the Marseille pattern, is now being. Um, used mostly by cartomancers Hmm. Mm -hmm. okay and then the what i talked about previous um atelier atelier however Mm -hmm. you say it was the first um to issue a tarot deck specifically designed for occult purposes around 1789 oh cool so in keeping with the unsustainable belief that such cards were derived from the book of toth um atelier's tarot contained themes that related back to ancient egypt yeah that was i heard that that's a a myth that tarot originated in egypt a a lot of stuff did originate from Mm -hmm. egypt but tarot is not one of them i would not be surprised if like and i'm also not surprised that that's probably a myth but a lot of stuff came from ancient egypt so i wouldn't be surprised if it were true (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm So just a little bit about how it works, because I know we're not going really into depth on how it works today. We're just talking (laughs) mainly about the cards themselves and what each part kind of means. But tarot is not about telling your future, which I think is very, it's like a misconception. Yeah. Um, Because you're like, oh, read me my future and you display cards. Like that's how all the movies kind of depict it. Right. But that's not it. It's more about your intuition and inner wisdom Mm -hmm. and so that's what you've always said about divination it's more about what's in your own head already it's just making contact with that higher self to get those answers that's what I think and I feel Mm -hmm. like sometimes me personally calling myself out I go into a card reading or any sort of type of divination reading and I look for an answer that I want even though internally I already know what the answer is, I'm just using like the cards or anything else that I do as like what's confirmation. The word? Yeah, confirmation yeah. that that's what I need to do or whatever. So yeah. yeah. So from your inner wisdom and intuition, you can find the answers that you seek, such as like if you're looking for positive change in your life. So let's say um it's not my life, you have a boyfriend, you know, or a significant other, girlfriend, whoever, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're not such a positive light in your life, but you love them dearly, but you know that there are things that could probably be done for life to change and to get rid of toxic things in your life, Right. Yeah. breaking up with the person that you love. And so you might not want to, but if your cards say so, and you know, that's what your intern, like internal like person says, I feel like, like that's the way to go, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I do that with like habits, you know, I'm like, should I work out? <laughs> Cards <laughs> always say yes. <laughs> uh, yep. Yep. And yeah. you know that deep in your head, you're supposed that, to do that anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's kind of like positive life changes, such as like breaking off a relationship that's toxic or changing your, your, um, thinkings on food. Cause like food is a big thing in my life where I love food. It's not good for me. Like the type of food is not good for me that I yeah. love. And yeah. so, you know, you need to make those positive changes and maybe you just need that one thing that will push you in the right direction. If that's a card reading or anything else, you know, and it's also, uh, you can manifest your goals through, mm-hmm. Tarot, mm-hmm. which I am all about manifestation. So yeah, it's a good way to keep yourself on. Tr- I mean, you know, we get lazy and sometimes that reading that uh, tarot deck, doing your pull or whatever it is, however it is that you do it mm-hmm. is 
helps you stay on track. I mean, you know what you're supposed to be doing, but sometimes that little bit of nudge from the tarot deck helps keep you pointed in the right direction. It's true. And I'm going to break off for a second while talking about working out in the gym. I went to Mm -hmm. the, I've been going to the gym recently. Yay. Yes. And today my gym had a cute little uh, joke. (laughs) Okay. So I'm probably going to butcher it. (laughs) But um, what is a ghost's favorite workout? Mm, I don't know. Deadlift. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> and I, I had to text that to my husband. And my husband goes, I don't know, boo machine. And I was like, what the heck is a boo machine? <laughs> he was like, I don't know. And I was like, it's deadlift, duh. And he goes, oh. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that that was great. And yeah, it was just, it was nice. My, (laughs) my, um, my professor currently comes in with a joke every day and really, yeah, right now, since it's Halloween season, he's been bringing up like spooky, spooky ones and stuff, you know, like the, the stereotypical, um, why don't zombies eat clowns? I don't know. Because they taste funny. Oh, (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's like that. And then I can't quite remember the one that he said today, but it was pretty, it was pretty good. Uh, Well, we've been posting on our Instagram, some jokes. mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we love the jokes. And Mm -hmm. so, and I just thought that the joke on at the gym was just really good. So (laughs) I had to say it. (laughs) I love it. Okay. Back to tarot. Okay. Okay. So where to start? And I know that river talks a little bit more later on about like how to get to know your deck and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But first you choose a deck that's right for you. You know, mm-hmm. if it feels right, it's probably right. My mm-hmm. deck and I are very not acquainted. <laughs> 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 they're, they're a little spicy towards me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then um, you need to educate yourself on it before you start. Because I came into tarot, I I asked for a tarot deck, and um, I can't remember where I got my tarot deck, actually. I I don't know. I think I just ordered it off Amazon. It felt like a really nice one. I liked the art on it. Mm -hmm. And um, I got my tarot deck, but I hadn't really learned a lot about tarot before I got it. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know. Like I, I, it's okay. And it's definitely like, don't be scared to use the book or help to understand what card you drew, you know? Oh yeah. Def- I still have to look at the book. Yeah. I can't remember off the top of my head what they yeah. mean. Yeah, no, for sure. But I didn't know that there were like different parts to it and everything. So, and I'm still learning. Mm-hmm. And so it's just maybe don't do what I did where I just bought one out of impulse. It's like, Oh, I really need this because I want to classify myself as a witch, but I don't know what I'm doing yet. You know? Oh, that's funny. (laughs) So I I pick mine always by the art. It's the art that speaks to me. Mm -hmm. No, I like, I like the one that I, I grabbed or bought, but I don't know. It's real spicy. So (laughs) it really doesn't like me. So I'm trying well, to that. <laughs> there are the major arcana cards mm-hmm. and typically those represent significant life events on a large scale. They're the, the bigger cards. Um, each major arcana card has a different number that's usually shown in a Roman numeral mm-hmm. um, numbered from zero to 21. And it's associated with the planet and star sign and keywords, which help you interpret what that particular card means. Mm -hmm. Um, All major arcana cards have a person representing the card. And in some, there's actually animals in the background, depending on what deck you have. There might be animals in the background, which could mean different things, depending on what the animal is. Mm -hmm. Do you know that in playing cards, you know, they have the joker. And in the tarot cards, they have the full card, which is number zero. It's considered to be the beginning of the deck, the full card. Oh, I can see where that, I could see where that all kind of connects because first of all, before my research, I didn't know that it was for like the tarot was first used as playing cards. And mm-hmm. then when I was doing a little bit, I was like, I guess it kind of makes sense that they, those connect. Mm-hmm, definitely. Mm-hmm. And then there's the minor arcana cards. And these are the ones that deal mostly with your day-to-day life. They have four suits 
and each suit has a theme. The suit, each suit is numbered from one through 10 with four additional uh, court cards, like the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So like in a regular playing deck, you've got the jack, queen, and king, and Mm -hmm. ace, I guess. Mm -hmm. And tarot cards, you've got the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. Okay. So you've got the pentacle suit, which represents earth. It's also referred to as discs or coin cards. Um, it pertains to material and physical, the material and physical uh, world. It often indicates money matters, career and success, but it can indicate levels of emotional and spiritual prosperity too. So it's all about um, physical and uh, material money's not the right word, um, richness, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then you have the wands, which represent fire. They're also sometimes called staffs or staves, I guess. The suit of wands is uh, more spiritual, and it's used to illustrate the energy of movement, growth, and new beginnings. Wands represent ideas and innovation. They are often related to your career or your sense of purpose in the world, but they can deliver a strong love message as well. Mm -hmm. And then you have cups, which um, represents water. That's the water element. And the suit of cups is connected to our emotions and our relationships and matters of our soul. So cup cards can reveal how we truly feel and how others truly feel about us. Mm -hmm. They also speak of our emotional well-being. And I think the more you use these, the more you'll remember this kind of thing. It's kind of hard just, you know, I'm listing these things out. You're not going to remember it. Just Mm -hmm. um, it's just for basic information to get you started. Mm -hmm. Then there's the swords, which is represents air. And the swords are most associated with conflict and strife, which can also be internal as well as external conflict. They cut to the heart of a matter, revealing our greatest challenges. They can tell of illness, heartbreak, war, loss, death, but they can also reveal truths that we need to face in order to move forward, which is ultimately a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I, Mm -hmm. I have a little bit on the moon and the tarot. Mm -hmm. All of that, which I think is really cool uh, because the moon and the tarot align as like superpowers to enhance like that awareness, you know, Hmm. like, and. Oh, um, neat. So, okay, go ahead. Yeah. And uh, made real by your um, intention, of course, intention setting, I think is very important and intuition of what the cards are telling you. So you can work with the moon as well with the tarot and get an even more strong and powerful and maybe on point, um, answer, answer that you're looking for. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I really like that. And then it also breaks down what you kind of said, where the cups are water swords or is air, you know, type mm-hmm. type mm-hmm. thing. And then uh, there was like one little thing that I wanted to talk about um, because I know when you're starting to play with it and like, you know, you're shuffling your deck and like your cards fly out at you. What do like, what do those mean? And when I draw a card and it's in reverse, what does that mean? You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so sometimes a card comes up like upside down backwards. Um, some tarot readers interpret these reverse cards in a way that is like the opposite of the cards, right side up meaning. And yeah. Other, I've heard that. Yeah. And other readers just don't even bother to interpret it like that. Like they just go as like, it's normal. I feel like not normal. Like, I mean, what am I? As if it's still right side up, yeah, as if which it's is what normal. I, I, I do now. I do that now. I ignore the reversal because I don't know enough about reversed mm-hmm. cards and their meanings. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, right now when I play, I I generally don't do the reversal. But as I get more serious about it, I think I will look into the reverse because I think it means you're pulling these cards out in a certain way, and it's you know I I think that that 
means something. I think I think that it does. But again, there are also great sources to help you understand. So if you want to be somebody who interprets an upside down card as the reverse of what there, it means up right side up, then there are definitely great sources. And we'll, we will probably talk more in depth on that in future episodes and as well mm-hmm. as probably on Patreon as well. So I just think that that was like an important like little thing that I wanted to add. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So what I like to do when I get a new deck is do an inter- interview, mm-hmm. quote, interview my deck. And it is a great bonding experience. I have never had a bad interview with any of my decks. Um, so I sit in a comfortable position. I like to sit crisscross applesauce on my bed. It's my safe space. I feel comfortable. Um, that's just, I like to do to do it there. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Um, You shuffle the deck while thinking about getting to know it, connecting with it, feeling yourself bond to it. You really feel the cards in your hands as you shuffle, feel the size of them, the, the feel of them. Are they slick? How do they shuffle together? Notice their temperature. Are they icy cold? Are they warm because of your hands? How thick are they? Are they thick cards or, or real thin cards? You get, you feel all of that. You've got to be, well, in my opinion, you need to be very focused on this deck when you're learning to interview it. Mm -hmm. And then once you feel that the time is right, you stop shuffling. And for my interview spread, I actually like to do six cards and I'll do it in the shape of a pyramid, starting at the bottom left corner and then going up to the peak and then down to the bottom right corner. So three up the side and then down the side. So I've Mm -hmm. got one at the top. So my first card that I pull, um, you, you can just do it in a row if you want to. There's really no, you know, it's just whatever it feels right to you. Some people might do it in a circle, actually, because, mm-hmm. you know, circle sometimes is, means a magical thing. So whatever feels right to you. Card one, I, I ask it to tell me about it. I say, tell me about yourself at the deck. I talk to the deck. What card best defines you? And I'll pull that card. And I'll read it and, and it, you know, <clears throat> I look up what that card means and I try to associate how that works with what it's trying to tell me. Mm-hmm. Card two is what is your greatest strength as a deck? Card three is what is your limitation as a deck? Card four is what are you most interested in teaching me? Card five is how can I best learn and work with you? And card six is what is the potential outcome of our working together? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can come up with your own questions, whatever questions you feel like. What what do you want to know about your deck? What Mm -hmm. do you want to get out of your deck? So, you know, you tailor your interview with them. It's it's a bonding time. It's a time where you're learning this deck is talking to you and you're talking to it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that's and I think that was when you you tried to do an interview with yours and you said that was where you came up with how it's spicy, right? It's so spicy. I just want to ask it why it's being spicy. (laughs) Because literally it was like, I was like, uh, tell me about yourself. And it, it, it did nothing made sense on it. And, and then I was like, okay, okay, okay. I'll do it again. You know? Mm -hmm. And it was like almost the exact same. It was like not wanting to like cooperate with me that is so funny so i i just i'm letting it be and then i got oh forbid i got a a, (laughs) an oracle card as well like oracle Mm -hmm. deck oh i love oracle decks which a lot of this applies to oracle decks too well Mm -hmm. except for anyway we'll talk about oracle decks at some point and uh and then the resentment from my tarot deck became even stronger. Oh, your tarot deck didn't like you having an Oracle deck. No, it didn't. And so my Oracle deck is just like, la la la. And then my, my tarot deck is over here. Like I could just feel the vibes. It's like, no, like I'm not having this with you. But I think that it's kind of like a balance because on days where I really need like the input and I really need it, it cooperates with me. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, whatever, I'll help you out today, but that's (laughs) it type of thing. And so, yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, there are different layouts that you can do and we don't have time to go into all of them, but I, I wanted to talk about some of the basic ones. Generally, it's customary to shuffle all 78 cards in the deck. 
mm-hmm. and you can cut the cards as many times. It, it's, it's a matter of what feels right to you. And you yeah. think about whatever your question is. Mm-hmm. So this allows your energy to interact with the energy of the cards to achieve the best results. It also helps if you do this in a peaceful and relaxed environment. So for me on my bed, for some reason is where I feel the best, most comfortable to do it. Um, When you're done shuffling, you speak your question out loud and pull the first card from anywhere in the deck. You don't have to go in order. You know, your intuition will guide you as to the right card. Mm -hmm. And you lay it in the first position of the spread in an upright position. And you do that for the remaining cards until every card is in place, depending on what your uh, layout is. And then you have to figure out what it all means, Um, which we certainly can't do in this one today. There's so many different meetings, meanings. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, many of the decks that you get, they actually have directions that give you um, ideas for layout, mm-hmm. suggested layouts. You can follow those just to learn about it. Um, I, lately, I've just been doing one card pulls in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'll do a one card pull thinking about, you know, what is today hold in store for me? How, how can I get things accomplished today? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I I've been using my Oracle cards actually in the morning lately. Mm -hmm. Um, My favorite tarot deck is actually down here in my um, altar room. So it's not there in my bedroom, which is where I usually read. Uh, So I've been using the the Oracle deck, but anyway. um, So other than the one card draw, the simplest layout is the three card layout. Mm-hmm. And it allows you just to do a basic reading and three steps. The cards, a lot of times a three card layout represents the past, the present and the future. But it can be any threefold thing like you, your path and your potential, you, your relationship and your partner your situation, action, and outcome, the idea, the process, and the aspiration. You can, you can do your layout to find out what it is that you're looking for. You can mm-hmm. tailor it to yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I usually do the three-card layout, like every now and then with my uh, tarot deck. Every mm-hmm. now and then when, I, when I'm having like a bad day or when I'm like having like what I call my anxiety days, I just wake up with anxiety for no Mm -hmm. reason, for just no reason. Your body, my body's just like, yeah, no, we're going to be anxious today. And I'm like, why? It's like, Mm -hmm. I I don't know. We're just anxious. Mm -hmm. So I always do like a three card layout whenever I have those days. Okay. Yeah. I I like the idea. I had heard about the past, present and future. And that was all I had heard that the third, the three card layout was for. So I loved finding these things that it can be you, your path and your potential, Mm -hmm. you, your relationship and your partner. I mean, this is so much more helpful to me than just past, present and future. Mm -hmm. You know, the situation that I'm in now, the action I need to take and the outcome I can get. Yeah. You know, I, I love that. Um, there are literally thousands of debt, go on to Amazon or anywhere. And you, you can find numerous types of, of tarot cards. Mm -hmm. Um, did you know that back in the beginning, you might've seen this when you did your research that they didn't have, um, printer presses, printing presses back then each 78 card deck was hand painted. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I can't, I can't imagine that. Uh, yeah. A one I, of a kind, I guess. Cause I mean, every, everyone's going to be slightly different. You slightly can't, even different. the same artist can't do the same thing every single time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's like, it's like, like arthritis right there in the hand. I know. Like carpal tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> I would be afraid to shuffle those because the paint, I know, would, you know, right. Like it would chip off. And like, I don't know, I don't touch things that are important to me really. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Now there are some superstitions about tarot cards and tarot decks. Mm-hmm. Um, it is unlucky for a, another person to touch your tarot cards according to one superstition. Okay. <clears throat> and they, that is not, that's not true. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's fine to not want people to touch your cards. I mean, we, we have our own energy and our cards know our energy, mm-hmm. but if you're reading for someone else, sometimes 
I think that it's important for that person to touch the deck because that puts their energy into that. You're reading about them. Mm -hmm. I think there are times when someone else does have to touch the deck, but it's perfectly fine not wanting anybody else to touch it. Yeah. But I don't think it's unlucky or um, anything like that. I, I, you know, I don't blame people for not wanting others to touch them unless you're reading for them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's just superstition. Uh, Another superstition is that the death card means that someone will die. Mm -hmm. And that is, as, as you know, I think everybody knows this. It's not really death literally. Yeah. Um, It is, it can mean all kinds of things. It could be an an ending, which is going to open up to a new beginning. Like when I was uh, doing a reading for a friend going through a divorce, the death card came up. I mean, and it, it was very accurate. Um, and it was the end of that relationship. It mm-hmm. gives me chills to think about it. Um, <gasps> and, and she literally was at the end of one segment of her life, getting ready to move through a door into another segment of her life. Mm-hmm. So it, it's generally a time of transition or something new that's happening, something that you're putting behind you. It, it can be a good card. You could be putting a toxic relationship behind you. Mm -hmm. It could be the death of something that's been holding you back. So the death card is not about physical death necessarily. Um, It it can actually be a good thing. A lot of people are afraid of the death card. And to me, it's not a scary thing. Um, I read somewhere that someone was saying, oh, tarot cards are dangerous because they attract beings that should not be around you which I found interesting. That's weird. I've never heard uh, that. Yeah, it was it was strange. It was in a comment on one of the blogs I was reading. Oh, I'd say I feel like that comes from somebody who's not educated on the mm-hmm. topic and then that's where a lot of um I don't want to like ignorant comments come from is mm-hmm. uh from people who are aren't educated on a certain topic. Right. And <laughs> but, fear, you know. It, yeah, I understand that. Welcome to my TED Talk. <laughs> Where I could talk about that for so long. <laughs> now, I found this great site. This this lady is so funny. You, and uh, you'll, you'll have to go check out her website. Her name is Beth Maiden. And she had so many fun blog posts. And I wrote down, I took two of them. And you all need to go check her out. She is, she is hilarious. So okay. She posts this one called The Fool's Journey, a Thanksgiving tarot spread to help you survive your family gathering. (laughs) I mean, so the title already is funny. Uh So, and I think she holds, she puts out eight cards. And the first card is yourself. Number two and three is the stuff that surrounds you at family gatherings. It could be the people who impact you, the energies that affect you, the reactions that you feel. uh, the whole, as she put it, big, messy, mixing bowl of it all. Mm-hmm. These family, you, everybody knows what we're talking about. These family yeah. gatherings. Yeah. Number four, the fourth card is how you should respond. This card shows you an energy to channel when you feel those difficult feelings. Mm-hmm. Number five, the card number five is what not to do. And, <laughs> and she, she's like, seriously, this ain't going to help right now. Don't do that. <laughs> Um, number six is hold on to this. This is your safe place. This is your grounding point, whatever is on card number six. It could be a place, a person, a thing, an internal quality. Um, she says it can never be touched or taken away by anyone in your family. It's yours alone. So hold on to it for strength. Mm -hmm. Number seven is something to be thankful for. She said, even when times are tough, there is always a reason to have gratitude. And remembering this can be really helpful. And then the last card, if all else fails, make a swift exit and do whatever is on this card instead. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. It was awesome. And the tone of her blog, it was funny, well written. Um, So yeah, definitely need to go and check her out. Uh I I wanted to put in, um, before we end, I wanted to tell you about a couple of my favorite, my favorite cards that are in the deck. Cool. Okay. So the fool is one of my favorite ones because the fool is all about like beginning a new journey and is Mm -hmm. a, it's a great place to explore. And, you know, it's, um, exploring the winding road. That is the major arcana type. That's, 
that's so neat because it is the beginning. I mean, mm-hmm. it is, it's the first card in yeah, the deck. So it is, it's, it's zero. So it's zero, yeah. So I, I really like that one because it's the beginning and it, it, it to me holds opportunity for something new. Mm-hmm. And then um, my second favorite is the magician because it represents the pulling together of those desperate intangible ideas and feelings. And I have a lot of those mm-hmm. like ideas and feelings floating around. I don't know what to do with them. And this one kind of tells you like, pull it together, you know, and that's where the fool says, I don't know where I'm headed, but I'm ready to go, you know, okay. type thing. Yeah. And so the magician is like a clear aspect on that. So they kind of go like they play hand together. in hand. Yeah. And I hmm. really like that because the website I also use to get like a little bit of like definition to tell you guys, put them like back to back. And I, I really like that, even though I can't remember the number of the magician right now. What is it? Um, I can tell you because I've got them out. Mm-hmm. It is number one. Number one. So yeah, they're exactly zero and zero one. Yeah. And, one. Mm-hmm. and um. The magician is also about knowing your why, setting intentions, uh, choosing direction, like where you're trying to go and focusing your energy. So you got the fool that's like, let's go. No plan. Let's go. The magician's like, hold on. Let's plan it out. We can go, but let's plan it out type thing. And so I have parts of me that's like, okay, no plan. Let's go. And then I have the other part of me that's like, whoa, I can't (laughs) do that. I can't do that. So I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I have a favorite deck. My favorite deck is the Tarot de de la Nuit. Tarot of the Night. It's mm-hmm. a French deck, and the the pictures on them are gorgeous. Um, and I don't know enough to know what all of them mean yet. Like the Fool is is beautiful. It's I wish I could show you the picture, but Death is probably my favorite card, mm-hmm. and it is number thirteen, which is funny. I think. Ah, oh, I like what they did there. Oh. Um- I don't know if this will give away anybody to anybody what my favorite p- other podcast is that I listen to, but um, one of the hosts just uh, did an episode on the number 13, like not too oh, long neat. ago, and it was very interesting. Oh, how fun. It was very interesting, and I just, like, 13 is like, I think they said something about, like, 13 is like quote unquote, like uncomfortable because 12 is such a perfect number that like huh. the, the number after thir- after 12 is just like uncomfortable and like the, the outlier basically, which I thought was really interesting. Interesting. Well, I, I like death because it does generally mean it's, you're ready to move on from something bad. You're taking your life in a new direction. I, I feel like the death and the fool ought to go together death first. And then the fool where mm-hmm. a death is you're leaving something horrible behind. And the fool's like, let's go find what's new. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. 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 yeah I've got my deck in front of me. They're um, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous cards. Th- these are my favorite cards and I've come up with I've found several I've got more tarot decks than I know what to do with but <laughs> I love them oh another thing that Beth um uh maiden uh talked about was you can play Twitter tarot games really yeah she said that Teresa Reed tweets a tarot card twice a day with tags hashtag am am tarot and hashtag pm tarot And it's super simple. She tells you the card and you tweet her back your interpretation, which is really Mm -hmm. a great way to start learning what the cards mean. If you do that every day, twice a day, Mm -hmm. you're going to start to remember what these cards mean. And then she said that even more for her and her opinion is hashtag tarot two, T-A-R-O-T-T-O-O, not the number two, but two is an also. Mm-hmm. And she said, there are two cards and you tweet your interpretations of them as a pair, which is just like what we were talking about yeah. with the fool and the magician or death and the fool. Um, and, you know, she said, it is a great way to practice reading cards together and getting your head around the fact that cards aren't just singular. A lot mm-hmm. of times they are interpreted with another card. Yeah. You know, yeah. so 
Um, yeah, I, I love tarot cards and I want more tarot cards, which my husband says, why do you want more? You've got 50 million decks. I'm like, there, there is no such thing. <laughs> too, that should be a t-shirt. There's no such thing as too many tarot cards, too many tarot decks. It's funny. Cause I'll, I'll ask river. I'll be like, Hey, what do you want for like your birthday? What do you want for Christmas? You know? Mm-hmm. And all the time it's, Oh, more tarot decks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love them. They're beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you also know that there's like a trend going on on TikTok right now where there's like a filter where it'll um, show a tarot card, right? No, I haven't seen that yet. And it's really funny because a lot of like, it's not like what it means that they're tr- making trend. It's like uh, what tattoo you have. And so ah! somebody, it was funny because like, I've seen a couple where it's like, like they're just doing the card and then they have the exact same tattoo, right? Oh, neat. And so there's been a couple and there was one where it, this guy um, was like, oh, supposedly it shows you what tattoo you have. And then it popped up with the star and then hands. So it's like a different and has hands above the star. And yeah. He, he only saw the star at first. He goes, I don't have a star tattoo. And then he looked a little bit more and it processes in his head that there were hands like and in a certain position, like, like above each, like one above and above one below and below. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he had that exactly tattooed on his chest and it was so cool to like see his shock and like, that's nice. But I, yeah, it was pretty cool. So there's like that going on, like right I'll have now to go find that. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's all that I have. Yeah. Me too. For basics. I mean, mm-hmm. we for could talk basics. for hours and hours and I hours. Know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that gets everybody a good basic idea of tarot cards and, you know, we'd love to hear what your all's thoughts are and what decks are your favorites mm-hmm. because, you know, you'll have to post the tarot de la nuit. It's, you know, T-A-R-O-T tarot, D-E-L-A-N-U-I-T, which, you know, cause you're French. I mean, you've mm-hmm. taken French. So night French for night, but mm-hmm. um, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. Mm-hmm. I bet. I haven't seen it. I don't think, I don't think you've showed me. Maybe not. I don't, I don't know that I've ever had it out when you've been over. Yeah. Well, Hmm. okay. We'll have to change that anyway. Oh yeah. I also want to give a shout out because we have a new patron. Yay! Adrian. We want to shout out Adrian because they are our new patron. I am so excited. I got a a new coven member. Yes. A new coven member. I got the email. It was like, like, because I I signed up for like the emails to like notify mm-hmm. me and everything. And I was laying in bed about to fall asleep and I heard my phone buzz and I was like, huh, what is that? So I checked it with like my eyes half open. It was like new subscriber. And I was like, oh, no way. <laughs> we have a new patron. Yeah. And both Kate and Adrian, I mailed out your totes today. I did send you a message on Patreon to let you know that our patrons get, um, all kinds of fun things. If you mm-hmm. come and support us, we've got little note pages and to-do lists mm-hmm. and bonus episodes, bonus episodes. We're actually doing a, a love spell, a spell episode. Uh, yeah. Spell episode, not love spell. <laughs> I don't know what's on my brain. We're um, doing a spells episode. Spells episode. Yeah. Wow. See, these drinks are dangerous. (laughs) I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, I think by the time we get to the end, we're not making much sense. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, our patrons do get lots of stuff. We're doing Halloween um, recipes so that you Mm -hmm. all can do Halloween. I've got one. I just put up one today that will come out, I think, Saturday Mm -hmm. for Monster Mash, which is chili, basically. But yeah, I just posted that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, fun stuff for our patrons. Cause we really, really, really appreciate you guys. Yes, Thank you we really very do. much. And, um, <laughs> you can also, you can find us on all social media. I know we say this shebang all the mm-hmm. time, social media, that's Facebook, uh, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. um, you can also find us at www.c3, which you podcast.com Dot com. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes ma'am and there is our website yes you can find yes. <laughs> patron merch everything the whole shebang Definitely. 
Definitely. So come come check us out. Um, Give us ideas. Our new patron has already given us an idea that we'll probably do in November. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, give us ideas. We would love to talk about whatever you want us to talk about. Yes, we are so excited. Yeah. So uh, we'll be back. (laughs) We'll be back. We'll be back. Next week. Next week. (laughs) Okay. Bye. Bye.